a rainbow ganger in Philadelphia was arrested on charges that she abused two children. It's all over the news. I want to offer a few comments. I'm only going to keep you for 10 minutes, but I'm going to offer a few comments on this. Now the details here. A Philadelphia transgender activist identified as Kendall Stevens is now charged with sexually assaulting two children under the age of 13. The state attorney general's office filed charges tonight against 37 year old Kendall Stevens. The charges include the indecent assault against a person less than 13 years old, unlawful contact with minor sexual offenses and endangering the welfare of children, parent or guardian. Stevens came to Action News in August of 2020 after she was attacked in her Point Breeze neighborhood. She says she was targeted by a violent group for being a trans woman. Stevens then became a prominent activist for the LGBTQ community. She urged lawmakers to change Pennsylvania's hate crime statute to include protections for LGBTQ people. She is seen here in March of 2021 at a press conference launching District Attorney Larry Krasner's LGBTQ plus advisory board. The board was created in part to be a source of information and resources for victims and survivors of crime within the community. It means to me that the transgender population will finally get the support that we need from city officials that we really haven't gotten historically. Sources tell Action News the charges are in relation to the of two young boys under the age of 13. Stevens remains in custody tonight. A spokesperson for the district attorney's office said in a statement, the investigation of allegations against her is being led by another agency. And as such, we have no comment. Many of our children come into that lifestyle by way of introduction, by way of child molestation. But here's what I wanted to say. Here's what I wanted to say. A prominent rainbow activist in Philadelphia. A prominent rainbow activist in Philadelphia was arrested on charges that she allegedly abused two children. A rainbow ganger in Philadelphia was arrested on charges that she abused two children. It's all over the news. I want to offer a few comments. I'm only going to keep you for 10 minutes, but I'm going to offer a few comments on this. I want to offer a few comments on this. I want to offer a few comments on this. First of all, first of all, let me see here. Okay. The arrest, the arrest of 37 year old tra uh, rainbow activist Kendall Stevens, arrested Monday in Philadelphia on charges including rape, indecent assault, endangering the welfare of a child, corruption of a minor related charges on Monday following a comprehensive investigation, Philadelphia Police Department spokesperson told Newsweek. OK, this rainbow community lady is a transgender. OK. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't believe that all transgenders abuse children. I don't believe that all rainbow gangers abuse children. But I do want to let you know this. As someone who has worked with children for 25 years, psychologically, therapeutically, socially, and every other way. Many of our children come into that lifestyle by way of introduction, by way of child molestation. Okay. And we in the black community have been in denial. And one of the biggest reasons we in the black community have been in denial about the mollusk to rainbow pipeline. The reason so many of us in the black community have been in denial about the mollusk to rainbow pipeline. Many of us in the black community are in denial about the child mollusk 
to Rainbow Gang Pipeline. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And the reason we are in denial about the child molestation to Rainbow Gang Pipeline is if we admit it, if we were to admit as Africans, If we were to admit that many of our rainbow gang adults were actually introduced into the lifestyle through childhood molestation, if we were to admit that, that would force us as a community to take a long, hard look in the mirror. It would force us as a community to take a long, hard look at ourselves. But because America has given the black community a scapegoat. America has given the black community a scapegoat. America has given us a distraction and excuse. America has given black America an alibi. We have an alibi so we don't have to look in the mirror at the high rates of molestation. Pedophilia. Child pornography child grooming that takes place in the black community. We don't like to talk about that. And the government has given us an out because the American Psychological Association and the American Psychiatric Association and the American Mental Health Establishment, they have come out and basically said that this behavior is completely normal. The behavior is completely normal. We can't help how we are born. We can't help what our desires are. This is normal. It has nothing to do with childhood dysfunction. It has nothing to do with failed families. It has nothing to do with child malice. And that's an absolute lie. That's an absolute lie. That's an absolute lie. I don't need to do no research. I ain't got to look at no research. I work with our children. I know our children. I've worked with our rainbow gang sisters. I work with our rainbow gang brothers. And I know most of them were touched as children. Most of them were touched as children. Most of them were abused or assaulted or abandoned or emotionally stripped of their identity with their natural born gender. I know this. But we want to hide behind Joe Biden and Barack Obama's agenda. We want to hide behind the population control agenda. We want to hide behind the population control agenda's excuse. And we're letting them come into our children's public schools and sexually groom our children in the name of sexual education. We're letting them come into the charter schools and public schools, even so-called African-centered schools. We're letting them come in there and sexually groom our children under the disguise of sex education. Black America is under a demonic hypnosis. Black America is under a demonic hypnosis. Finally, somebody from the Rainbow Gang has been exposed for molesting children. Finally, because all we've been hearing about is straight people. As if that community doesn't suffer the same psychopathology. All we've been hearing about is straight people. Now we have a prominent rainbow activist. He, she ain't the first. She, he ain't the first. He, she ain't the first. Him, her, her, him, it ain't the first. There's many more. But because there's an agenda to normalize the behavior in the interest of African genocide. But because there's an agenda to normalize the behavior in the interest of African genocide. Because there's an agenda to normalize the behavior in the interest of African genocide, black America looks the other way. You know how many phone calls I've gotten about black pastors? You know how many phone calls I've gotten about black churches whose leadership either participates in the sexual abuse of children or turns a blind eye to it? Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family.
We talk about surviving R. Kelly. How about surviving the black community? When is that series coming out? We're talking about surviving R. Kelly. What about surviving the black community? When is that series coming out? How about surviving your stepdaddy? When is that series coming out? How about surviving your stepmom? When is that series coming out? How about surviving your rainbow aunts and uncles? When is that series coming out? How about surviving the Roman Catholic Church? When is that series coming out? This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. And I want to say this. We got a lot of children being suspended and expelled for their hairstyle. We have a lot of black children being excluded from education because of their hairstyle across the United States of America. And I'm disappointed in their parents. And I'm going to tell you why. And the reason I'm disappointed in our black mothers and fathers, the reason I'm disappointed in the black parents of these children who have been suspended and expelled from public and charter schools across America for wearing their African hair, for wearing their African hair, for wearing their natural African hair, happy to be nappy. They're supposed to be happy to be nappy. I'm bringing back the happy to be nappy movement. I'm bringing back the happy to be nappy movement. And if you ain't happy to be nappy, you're not coming to the conscious singles convention. If you're not happy to be nappy, you're not coming to the conscious singles convention. I'm even thinking about making all FDMG events. I'm even thinking about making all FDMG events. I'm even thinking about making all FDMG events exclusive to the happy to be nappy African community. I'm thinking about discriminating against non-natural Africans. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. This is King Kong consciousness. This is RB Jesus. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I am seriously contemplating closing all FDMG events off to adults. I'm not going to discriminate against elders and I'm not going to discriminate against children. I'm not going to discriminate against elders and I'm not going to discriminate against children. I'm not going to discriminate against elders and I'm not going to discriminate against children. But everybody in between. 18 to 64, if you are 18 to 64 and your hair isn't natural, if you are 18 to 64 and you're not happy to be nappy, I think you will not be allowed in any FDMG events. FDMG events. I think it's time to discriminate against those who refuse to be happy to be nappy. If you are not unapologetically African, a.k.a. happy to be nappy, if you are not unapologetically African, a.k.a. happy to be nappy, if you are not unapologetically African, a.k.a. happy to be nappy, I don't think you're going to be allowed at any of the community events at FDMG because I'm getting sick and tired of black women imitating Caucasians. I'm getting sick and tired of black women imitating Caucasian snow bunnies. I'm getting sick and tired of black women imitating Caucasian snow bunnies. So if you got to imitate the white woman 403 years after slavery started, if you're still imitating white women 403 years after slavery started, I don't think you have any right to be in my school. I don't think there's no place for you inside of the walls of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I sound dumb. I want you to have a nice day, Dolly Sinclair. You might be a snow bunny. Why are you on my damn live? Why are you on my damn live? You going to the block. I'm sending you to the snow bunny block party. I just sent you to the snow bunny block party. You know you're not invited because you got a perm. That's right, sister. You know you're not invited. <laughs> leave chef barbie alone leave my chef barbie alone leave my wilmington delaware chef barbie alone chef barbie knows she gotta go natural chef barbie knows she gotta go natural chef barbie knows she gotta go natural leave chef barbie alone but let me get back to the point let me get back to the point let me get back to the point i see you siobhan i see you siobhan let me get back to the point it's time to go unapologetically African. But back to my parents of these black children being expelled and denied education because they're wearing their natural hair. Why am I angry at parents for their children being suspended and expelled for wearing natural hair? Why am I angry at black parents for their children being expelled for wearing natural hair? The reason I'm angry at black parents is if you follow Dr. Umar Ifatunde, if you listen to my, le my uh, lectures, if you attend any of my black parent boot camps, you will know that your child's right to wear their own natural hair is a First Amendment protected freedom of speech activity. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. 
If you read my book, Black Parent Advocate, if you came to my Black Parent Boot Camps, if you read my books, if you follow my work as the most revolutionary school psychologist in American African history, you will know because I've taught this and I cover this in Black Parent Advocate that your child's ethnic hairdress in a public and charter school, your child's ethnic hairdress in a public or charter school your child's ethnic hairdress in a public or charter school is a first amendment freedom of speech protected activity they cannot make your child undo their hair in a public or charter school they cannot they cannot unless your child's hair causes your child's hair must cause a substantial disruption to the educational process. If your child's hairstyle doesn't cause a substantial disruption to the educational process, if your child's hairstyle doesn't cause a substantial disruption to the educational process, they cannot make them cut it. They cannot make them cut it. They cannot make them take the locks out of their hair. They cannot do that. It is illegal. It's a First Amendment protected freedom of speech activity. They're being suspended and expelled because their black parents don't follow Dr. Umar's teachings. They're being suspended and expelled from school for ethnic hairdress because their parents don't father doc don't follow Dr. Umar's teachings. They're being suspended and expelled from school because their parents are ignorant of their children's rights. And why are you ignorant of your children's rights when I've been preaching and teaching and training you for 25 years? There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Your child can go to public school and wear their hair any kind of way they want as long as it doesn't cause a substantial disruption to school operations. If it doesn't call a substantial disruption to, to the educational process, they cannot make your child change their hair. You would know that if you follow Dr. Ifa Tunde. I see you, Mika Mokelu. Mika Mokelu, I see you, Queen. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. We got to paint the building. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. We got to get carpet for the rooms. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. We got to get televisions in every classroom. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. We got to get the epoxy floor and the tiles put down. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. We got to get a fence put around the school. Hit the cash app. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. International Africans, PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. International Africans, PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Your children do not have to cut their hair. I don't care what the school policies say. The school policy cannot trump constitutional rights. School policy cannot trump constitutional rights. School policy cannot trump constitutional rights. I need some secretaries for the National Independent Black Parent Association. I need some secretaries for the National Movement to Save Black Boys, male and female. I need some secretaries for the National Independent Black Parent Association. I need some secretaries for the National Movement to Save Black Boys. I need some secretaries for the unapologetically African happy to be nappy movement. I need some secretaries for Team Pan-African, the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People. If you are confidential and responsible, if you are a confidential and responsible heterosexual black man or woman, if you are a confidential and responsible heterosexual black man or woman, and you want to be a secretary for one of my organizations in your city, in your state, in your town, in my region, please text 215-989-9858. Let me know your city and your name and your state. Dr. Umar, I'm willing to be a secretary. I need people who can respond to emails, answer some phone calls, and help me organize people for different events. I'm organizing the black farmers my way. I'm organizing the black realtors my way. I'm organizing black teachers my way. I'm organizing Pan-Africanists my way. I'm organizing black parents my way. I'm organizing ex-offenders my way. I'm organizing black artists my way. I'm organizing black investors my way. We're going to do it the pan-Africanist way. We're going to do it the unapologetically African way. I'm going to talk about this in Fort Worth, Texas on Wednesday night. I'm going to talk about this in Fort Worth, Texas on Wednesday night. I'm going to talk about this in 
Phoenix, Arizona Thursday night. I'm going to talk about this in Phoenix, Arizona Thursday night. I'm going to talk about this in Detroit, Michigan Saturday night. I'm going to talk about this in Detroit, Michigan Saturday night. I'm going to talk about this in Antioch, California Friday night, January the 19th. I'm going to talk about this in Antioch, California Friday night, January the 19th. 